you know, but you forget. <laughs> You're supposed to be you doing think that. it's going to be really funny, and then you end up just kicking yourself in the butt with your <laughs> funny little jokes. Yes, yes, yes. So, anyways, um, where are we going to go with this show? I feel because we have such an awesome audience, a diversity. I felt like I was just not able to express myself before, and now all of a sudden we created a space where we can. And Spirit is like, "Oh, I love this because it's like I can." It's a playground. It's a total playground because of all of the, my past history of learning about every intriguing thing that can. Oh, three, three, three. Can, that can scare the crap out of you. That can. <laughs> Uh, learning how to heal, learning how to resolve it, learning how to take and do what you need to do. I have all of these programs. So anyways, I just saw 333, so now I've opened the book. Jen, what's it say? You are completely surrounded, protected, loved, and guided by the benevolent Ascended Masters. Now that's just funny, as I'm telling a horror story, or, well, it's telling you that as I grew up, there was all this negative and scary stuff and things I had defined it that way. And they're like, oh, excuse me, but you remember, you're really protected, so that's probably why I'm not frightened of a lot of things, because I don't need to. But I will not watch a scary movie. Hee hee hee. But anyway... No, I don't. I, yeah. I don't need those images put in my head to replay later in a moments that I do not like. Okay, but I am just so. Uh, I, you know what? We're I'm having such an awesome time. What I want you to do is hit the sweeper. It didn't pop back in. You didn't see me put it in. Oh, hello. No, I'm just kidding. Well, you got to listen to our awesome intro. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Learning. Can we? How are we responding, Jen? Are we processing it well? Yes, because yes. it is awesome. It's Spirit hilarious. says, "Learn to go with the flow." Mark says, "Hey, let me give you some ideas about how your first show but would you go." Well, <laughs> has it gone any way that we expected? <laughs> we had a list. We had quite the, the things we were going to do. It was a to-do list. We had everything just so great and organized. And she says to me, "Go get the list. Go get the list." I says, "It's going to be go with the flow day." <laughs> and I didn't realize how in depth the flow was, but it's okay. Uh, so we're 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 on two times Friday from two to four, and then we're also again on Monday at night from eight to ten. So right, and I'm that's so Eastern excited. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, Eastern Standard. I'm so excited about this, and I love the beginning stages because the beginning stages where people really um, in group consciousness in some level. You have it, it's like the baby. The baby begins to learn to crawl. It doesn't question itself. It just knows and discovers and goes. But then when it encounters its first hell, like imagine a baby crawling and getting stuck under a table. Only can crawl backwards. It's all it knows at this point. It doesn't know that it needs to know more stuff. Okay? So it crawls, gets stuck under the table and the chairs, and it gets more jammed. What's the baby going to do? <coughs> and who's the baby going to blame? Mama! No! <laughs> well, probably both. <laughs> Darn it, you ah, put me here. You abandoned me here. <laughs> I got stuck. And what happens is the more the baby crawls in, in backwards, the more it gets stuck. But it doesn't know it's the problem. And it didn't fail. It just doesn't know. Now, once it learns to just stop, don't get caught up at the moment, stop that reacting, you'll, you'll get out of it. And, and if not, mommy and dad will come and get you. Um, one time I was... Uh, when I was pregnant, I had uh, two, you know, you got a flight of stairs, two flights of stairs. As I was coming down, the second one, right straight up is the doorway to our bedroom. Well, my husband's sleeping in there, and I was walking down the steps to use the restroom because I'm pregnant. You know how that goes. Mark should know. <laughs> well, he's not the one carrying the baby. No, but he knows his probably wife got up a thousand times to go pee. I'm Again? Sorry. Again? Oh, you know, he's used to it by now. But so I'm, I, I had fallen on my back, and my back locked up, and literally, I was like, oh my god, and I couldn't breathe for a few minutes, and I was stuck, and I didn't know what to do, and then so I go, Scott, Scott, I'm just crying, I'm screaming, I'm crying and screaming, and nobody's coming. I thought, god, this sounds familiar. So then I, I stopped, and I, I, I thought for a moment, and which means I got out of um, being in the fight, flight, freeze, because you know what happens when you fight, flight, freeze? The frontal lobe where you create reality, 80% of the blood approximately leaves the forehead and goes into your arms and your legs so that you can run or fight or flee. Well, in this case, help wasn't coming. So it's all right, I'm going to have to, you know, root chakra, handle this myself. Do I have the necessities? And so I noticed anger can help you move. So I'm locked, I can't move, and more pain's coming. 
And then I just sat there and I got pissed. Well, I'll bounce show him. And I rolled over and I figured it out and I got up and I was mad and I and, and I vented and venting and backing up the truck and uh, dumping and I know I call it tanking. You'll learn all these cool gem words that we have and you probably already know them all anyway. But you know, it's our voice, our unique voice that we're going to share it with. And it's about learning. So when the baby, you know, has that only that one pathway, it doesn't have another one yet. But it's that moment of when you overreact. It's that moment that gets marked, and that's the energy points that I see. And you mark it with the, so much of your energy field, your life force. You get 100%, and it go, weaves in and out of form. It's not created or destroyed. You know, it's just there. It's, you get to decide how you want to take this energy, and the only way this energy can come to life is through thoughts and words and, you know, just how that goes. They're saying, take a breath, Brenda. <sighs> Jen, how about if you flip a card and see how we're doing? So how are we doing with today's show? And let's see, what do you got? The Angel Deck, Archangel, Oracle Cards by Doreen Virtue. And, and, wait for it. You know, dead air, we can't have that. Clear your space! Ah, says Archangel. Joe Feel. Get rid of clutter, clear the energy around you, and use feng shui. What the heck? Okay, no, that's, that's what we were talking about. But, no, did you hear me sound like a computer? Yes, you were talking in a monotone voice. Ah, so there's no variety of flavor. So you need to clear your space that turns you us into Echoes those it. robots, and mm -hmm. we just become a drone going through life, same yeah. stuff, different day. And when you clutter it, whether it is in your space in your head, the filing system in your head, or outside of you, you, you once you get so cluttered, it doesn't bounce off the walls, it becomes more monotone. And when you clear space, then you get to have that ray of the way your voice will propel off a wall or propel off this. And it's amazing how that, that sounds. So you're intentionally knowing that you came here and you have your own unique voice. Not a singing voice, doesn't even have to be a crackling voice, but it's the way that you write, the way that you tell your story, the way that you are being. And, and that's what this, these, this um, you know, Sepia Radio is all about, is creating that space where you can have your voice and, and, and all I can tell you is like a, an artist palette you know on the palette they hold and there's all these dabs of colors mm -hmm. they can be individually unique or you can blend them to create something else and that's what this radio show um, not this radio show but this radio station Sepia uh, is about because you have all these different ranges of flavors and voices and colors and and in the spectrum and it has something for everybody and it's not really has to be classified anything except for, you know, the unseen. It's having a voice. The voice, the unseen, finally gets a voice. But does it have to be condemned? We were watching a show last night called Charmed. And maybe some of you remember that, Three Witches, the Charmed ones. And the interesting part was how the show was saying that in the future, Phoebe does something by killing a human and that it was based on... Using the personal, powers for revenge. Yes, and so personal gain. And what happened was is that she had to be killed off. Now, what because she did it so many years ago by saying, oh, that dog just pooped on my porch, which was what the show did, and they, they, they flung the poop on this guy, okay? And it's those choices. It's those choices will have a uh, avalanche effect, the butterfly effect, whether it's past, present, or future, but it will end up changing the way the course can be depending if you the first time it's no big deal but then when you start creating a habit it can become a really big deal but what I wanted to point out was the group consciousness used to come with pitchforks it used to come with um, war cry and mob mentality but because we have moved into this um, oh, what do you call it in this space of the quickening and we're getting ready to get into, instead of the hertz frequency, we're starting to, to really bring in and become more of the infrared um, frequency. And it comes with a higher uh, spiritual vibration. And it doesn't mean more, um, not better than you. It's not a race to enlightenment. It's about waking up and waking up to self-actualization and waking up to, oh, God realization. And finding our true identity. So... It's important to understand that it, we have created a safer space to have a voice. 
We're still, if you look out in the world, we're still scared of that voice because Occupy. What's happening with that? And we don't want to go into the story of that because I'm sure someone probably already covered it, but on the quantum law of attraction, it is our inner world that we still are holding the memories that haven't resolved yet. You know what I mean? Because what happened when you went to Salem? Oh, the first time that I went to Salem. Is it okay for you to talk about it? Yeah. All the right. First, well, it is now. <laughs> <laughs> when I went to visit um, Salem, Massachusetts, the, I was 19, I do believe, and I just started having memories. It, I knew, it was, it, I still needed the map to kind of get around the city a little bit, but I knew where things were. It was so familiar. To be in that space, right? And but you had a trigger recall. The trigger recall when you went into Salem. Okay, and the I went fear aspect, the memory that did that wanted closure. Your soul brought it up to you was what triggered that. Was, okay, was going through. I went through. We saw the witch trial, and then we went to. But how the, was the intensity? You, oh, this is nice. No, no, I did not want to be there. I was. I wanted to be there because. I, I thought, oh, this would be really cool, Salem, my kind of people, da 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 I got there, it was like, ugh, I don't want to, I, I just felt so like I was So that was it. that intuition splice moment before any filters of hell came through. You knew and remembered it, but you didn't remember, because time, time is only so that everything don't happen at once, but because it had already happened in our reality, and because it was going on in that moment, you have tapped into that frequency of remembering what it felt like to be burned or hung or... Right, then we went to the Witch Museum where they had the dioramas of what actually took place and I could not look at them. Luckily I have a mom who's cool enough to say, okay, I'll take care of you. I under She understood what was going on. Great and mom. So, okay. And so I just put my face into her back and said, I need to get out of this place, I cannot look anymore because I could tell you the nth de to the nth detail of what was really taking place in all those situations because I just knew. So when you enter a space, there is that uh, <coughs> pathway that's already there, but then if it triggers you into a recall that's your soul saying to you that it really, really, really wants you to resolve this now, here, here it is, resolve it. But as a human, we go, oh crap, because we don't know how to... Uh, define it, lack of knowledge, not sure, and so what happens is that since you didn't know what to do with it then, you don't know what to do with it now, you had to move. So, but you had your own personal recall with the energy in that space, and it, the triggers itself was just, it could have been some, one object out of the whole room that could have just done it. But, you also know, some people always say, what about my past life? Well, let me tell you, here's the biggest thing that you can tell, you will know. Um, like for instance, my daughter loves Eskimo stuff, and she was an Eskimo in a past life. I love the Renaissance period. Guess what? I'm in the Renaissance period. So the language is I am and I was. Well, it's both right because it depends on which frequency you're choosing to communicate with this reality. So you literally, one of the things that you love, you will end up finding out. Even when you extremely hate it, you can also say that was part of your past life. But when you really hate it, all you're doing is saying that it's time to resolve it. Um, it hasn't been resolved before. And Or, here's another thing. Um, that people say, well, i got more to learn on it. No. And then you even saw a question yesterday where somebody says, well, what if I don't want to learn it? Yeah, why am I keep, why am I, um, why, did, why do lessons keep coming to me that I have no desire to learn? And that's because you probably have to unlearn something and preserve all the positive learning so that you can actually create a closure to it. There's the beginning process of creating this with a spectrum that is completely full of potential, completely unlimited, and you can do it forever. Okay? But then there are specific things your soul says, oh, I have to learn within this.